So Maury's Lincoln is here today with a couple of 2020 vehicles. Now what we wanted to do is compare the new Lincoln Navigator with the new Lincoln Aviator. Now the examples here we have today are the black label. So it's going to be the top trim. So what we can do is show you all the options and features and then show you some cool stuff inside each of the cars. We're going to start with the Lincoln Navigator. Now the reason we chose both of these vehicles is that you might not know the Aviator is also a seven passenger vehicle. So this is the big daddy, the top of the line black label. And if you haven't been in a Lincoln Navigator in a while, you may be like a lot of people. Now this car used to be sort of referred to as the Ford parts bin where it was just getting repurposed parts and it's not as much luxury as you find here today. But if you get inside this vehicle, you are going to be absolutely amazed at how far they've come. One of the things Ford did carry over to this car, which I really like, is gonna be that 3.5 liter V6 that you may be familiar with in the new Ford Raptor. So this thing gets up in boogies. It's great in the snow today. You can even put some better snow tires on here and pretty much go wherever you want want as this is a tank on four tires. Now from there outside, a lot of styling and different cues. There's a lot of cool colors on these cars. There's a lot of neat interior features, but I love that teardrop grille on the front. It's the Lincoln design that they've kind of adapted to the new body style. And this car with the white and the black wheels and the black trim, it just looks so, so good. Even out here in a cloud of white up in Minnesota, this car stands out and looks nice doing it. So let's take a look inside the Navigator first. This is the black label, which is gonna be the top of the line model. And it is so, so nice. I love the layout of the screen and the simple controls, the wood in here that looks really good. And there's a lot of different options. So if you don't wanna do kind of this cream or white leather, there's plenty of other options. Now those back seats have their own controls back there. And this one does have the optional rear entertainment system, which is so cool. Maybe you're heading up to the cabin all the time and wanna keep the kids busy in the back. This is definitely the option you're gonna want. But from the driver's seat, it is a excellent place to be. I love these 30 way adjustable seats, the steering wheel, the, the driving position is good. I do have to be honest, I like the Aviator a little bit better for visibility, but obviously this is a bigger car, so you are gonna have to give up a little bit of that. I mean, as a day-to-day -day driver, heated seats, I mean, the just simple comforts that you have and everything, the radio is just incredible in here, and even just the design on the radio and the doors is so cool and it all looks so good. But the the mixed leathers, the mixed driving experience where you've got so much safety. You could go on for 45 minutes just talking about the safety features in here and all the technology, but there's a lot of storage space. I know you've got the big cubbies under here if you're storing. Uh, maybe extra drinks. There's so many cup holders in this car. And the infotainment system is really cool. Sync 3 in this car, easy to use. And then your center dash here, where your gauge cluster would be. So that's pretty well adjustable to you can kind of get the way you want it to look. And it's really, really classy looking. This is a tough market to break into. And if you want a luxury SUV that's comfortable, that's nice to drive, that fits all your stuff, has the panoramic roof, has the space in the back, Back for all the people you're hauling around, this has to be on the top of your list. And I don't say that nicely to all the other cars because there are a lot of really good new SUVs out there, but I think you absolutely have to get out and drive the Navigator if you need something of this size. Okay, so it's cold, it's windy up here in Minnesota, and I really want to be inside this car, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about the outside. Now, for an engine in this one, you have a three liter twin turbocharged V6, making about 400 horsepower. There's also a Grand Touring Black Label, or you can get the high hybrid version which has 494 horsepower and a ton of torque on tap and it's mated with an 8-speed automatic transmission so it's going to get decent fuel economy in either a rear wheel drive setup or an all-wheel drive setup which I would obviously opt for up here in the snow and the cold weather. From there the design and style is one of my favorite in the class which includes a Land Rover, Range Rover, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, all those big SUVs that are really good looking, I think this one almost stands on top of those. It's just so well designed from the wheels to the way the body flows all the way to the back. It's got these cool settings when you walk up to the car with the key in your pocket, how the headlights kind of almost smile at you, but I think they did such a great job and the only thing better than the outside is the interior. So let's take a look at that. So like I said, now we're inside the Aviator and you can absolutely tell where that name comes from. This sort of turned aluminum look that goes through the deck and into the center console is so pretty in here and it's so well done. This interior with the two-tone and that silver 
It flows so well and these seats are incredibly comfortable. You might have regular power seats in your car, but you don't have 30 way adjustable seats. Now there's a button on the side over here and you can press right next to the memory seat. That's gonna pull up even more options for how you can move this, how you can adjust it all. You can move each leg individually if you're like me and you have longer legs and want the extra space. It's so, so good and one of the best parts of this car. Again, back to the aviation, when you start the car, so like I mentioned, when you walk up to it, the headlights move, but the vehicle will also lower itself down so it's easier to get in and out of. From there, once you start the car back up, it'll raise back up and you're ready to drive. Now there is drive select modes here, which are so cool. You've got normal, which is effortless and balanced. You can go into an eco mode, you can go into more of a sport mode. It is a premium luxury car. Now, like I said, I like the style more than some of those German cars that are in the same, if not higher price range. Just the way the cabin is laid out. Now everything's comfortable and easy and the steering wheel is comfortable. You can hear those little notifications. It's not your typical loud, annoying beep. Like if you open the door and leave it, Lincoln's done a pretty cool job of having those sounds be relaxing. Who is looking at this vehicle? Maybe if you've driven one of those German SUVs and you want a seven passenger, but don't want to keep stepping up in that lineup, this car is great for that. If you want to really buy in and trust that Lincoln nameplate, like I certainly have after driving this car, I think you have to get out and drive one of these. The all-wheel drive, the black label, especially in this trip is so, so cool and pretty. If you need more space, the Navigator, don't get me wrong, is almost identical, but just bigger, more space, a little more motor. But this car I think is a great size. Throw the kids in the back if they need the extra leg room. Those are heated, cooled seats in the back as well for the captain's chairs. It's so cool. It's just a really, really neat car. On behalf of West End Lincoln, thanks for watching. Now, if you'd like to schedule a test drive in either one of these vehicles, make sure to call, click, or stop by today. Thanks again for watching.